Hello everyone, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the donkey with glasses, and today we're going to take a deep dive into the new series I'll be calling Behind the Script. In this series, we're going to take in-depth looks into the voice acting industry and how many of the characters we know and love share the same voice actors and actresses behind the script. Because you see, many of the characters we enjoy in anime, video games, movies and more are played by the same people and therefore interconnect our favorite shows and games together in a way you wouldn't normally expect. Some voice performers have had many tens of projects and you might be surprised with how many of them have worked together to bring to life the series we love. In today's episode, we'll be talking about Ikue Otani. Ikue was born on August 18, 1965 and has been known for the many roles she's worked over the course of her 34-year career in the animation industry. Ikue Otani originally intended to be a theater actress. While she found many places to practice, she found almost no places to work. She then decided to take a week-long course in voice acting and decided that if she could not act with her voice, she wouldn't be able to act in theaters. As such, she decided to work towards voice acting. We will be discussing the roles in chronological order, as well as discussing a bit on what makes her such a good fit for some of the roles. Some spoilers may be present. To start off, the role that debuted Ikue as a full-on TV seiyu or voice actress was Takeshi and or Kiyoshi Hara from the 1986 anime Gambare Kickers. I'm not 100% sure on which one since there's conflicting information floating around, including Ikue's own account that she played one of the kids versus the twins sounding pretty much the same. This obscure anime is about the rise to the top of an always loser soccer team after the arrival of a new student that turns the tide in their favor. This role is important to know of because of how it paved the way for Ikue to start her career. Without these characters, she might have not been able to cast for the high-profile anime roles we know her for today. Something to note is that it is not uncommon for voice actresses in animated media to portray small voice. This is done to avoid recasting the character if puberty changes their voice. This is especially common on Japanese anime, where pre-teen voice actors are scarce. In fact, Ikue's roles have mostly been small voice and cute animal-based characters. After this initial role, Otani got picked up for several minor and supporting roles on shows like Juju Hakusho, Ghost Files on 1992. If we go by her own account, by 2004, the only character she played that was older than 11 was Nonohara Himeko, the protagonist of Himechan's Ribbon, a 1992 shoujo or girl-oriented anime. Himeko was a 13-year-old tomboyish girl that learns to be more feminine. After that role, she relegated to more supporting roles as with Sailor Moon in both 1994 and 1996, first as Yu Chaoten and then as Sailor Thin Nyanko. These appearances didn't last much and as such are not a major occurrence on her career. Now I'd like to make a small stop on the role that is Mitsushiko Suburaya one of the detective boys on the classic anime Detective Conan. She started the role in 1996. This is one of her most prominent roles due to the sheer amount of time she's been doing it. Ikue has been playing the voice for Mitsuchiko for nearly 25 years now. It is truly astounding that she's managed to maintain the character fresh even after all the seasons that Conan has been true. Oh, now, we've talked about some of the roles on the mainstream anime during her early days, but while they're important for her start, none would be as defining as that fateful 1997 casting. In 1997, Utani came in to cast for a new animated series. It was based on a series of video games that had launched on the year prior. The games sold so well that they decided to make an anime about him. You see, in Japan, 
voice actors rely on their management companies to look for appropriate roles for their voice profiles. They also decide who to send to audition for each role. As such, to Miss Ikwe, this was an audition like any other. She didn't know that she was casting for an anime about a video game that was already taking Japan by storm. The anime was Pocket Monsters. You may know it as Pokemon, but she had no idea what Pokemon was back then. In 2004, Utani revealed in an interview by the Manga University founder, Glenn Cardi, that due to miscommunication, Ikue Otani originally thought that she was going to be auditioned for Team Rocket's Meow, who was a character with speaking lines for comical relief. However, the producers actually expected her to cast for Pikachu. She nearly missed the audition, but thanks to her management company, she managed to do it just fine. She actually got the role. It was then that the legend was born. The iconic Pikachu that we all know and love was already set in stone. Originally, Pikachu was going to learn Japanese, but the producers ended up liking that Pikachu only said its name. As such, Miss Otani would be stuck playing Pikachu and saying only one line for the rest of the series. Pika -pi. Pikachu? Pika -pika. Pika. Pika -pika. Pika -pika. Pikachu? Pikachu? At the time, I was disappointed, but because Pikachu doesn't speak Japanese, children all over the world can hear my voice. And oh boy did we! It's hard to find someone that hasn't heard Pikachu even once. After the success of the Pokemon anime, partly because of her cute voice acting, the games got yet another version, Pokemon Pikachu version, or Pokemon Yellow as most of us know it. The video game featured Pikachu as a companion to the player, and Otani's voice would be played every time the player started the game. Her voice had such an impact that today, Pikachu is the official poster child for the Pokemon company. Pikachu has appeared everywhere from the original anime, to airplanes, soup, and even toilet paper. Ikue Otani has truly given life to the character and continues to play it to this day. Not long after the Pikachu role, her career gates opened. In 1999, she got the role for Tony Tony Chopper, one of the characters from One Piece. Little did she know that she had already involved herself with two of the most prominent anime in recent history. This is yet another role she's held on to to this day. In 2002, she played Koryu from Inujasha. And in 2003, she played Konohamaru from Naruto. She also played Satch from Satchville the same year. Her most recent and notable role is that of Morgana in the Persona 5 series of games. The cat-like being is an assistant character to the player and chose an edgy vibe to go with the theme of the series. Ikuo Otani has also played roles in many video games that are not Pokemon related. For example, she's played characters like Sachiko from the Course Party series. <laughs> she is also the Japanese voice actress for Tiki from Fire Emblem. And Timo from League of Legends.
Now, she's done many other roles, but if I was to list them all, we'd be here all day. Well guys, voice talents can be more than versatile, and I think Ikue Otani is one of the tried and true examples of perseverance and adaptability in an industry. I hope you learned from this episode that our favorite franchises are more interconnected than what you'd imagine. I was so surprised when I found out that Ikue Otani was the one behind so many characters. It is truly mesmerizing all the different anime and universes that Otani has had a hand in giving life for us. Does Ikue play a character you like? Which one? And what do you think of her fateful story? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Oh, and while you're at it, like and subscribe if you like this video. This has been the Donkey with Glasses. Thank you, and I hope you have a great, blessed day.